Good afternoon. Uh, greetings from Finland. My name is Lotta Pakanen and I work as a specialist in CV Study Center. And we have some, some experience in selfie batches and I'm here to tell you about a little bit more about our work. So let's start. Let's see how this works. Okay, here. Yeah. <laughs> So what is CIVIS? I thought I would tell you first, what are we? So we are an um, educational provider. We, pre we present the vocational adult education and we have uh, 76 member organizations. So Finnish NGOs and here are some examples. And we do a lot of cooperation with these. NGOs. There is the Finnish Red Cross, the 4-H, Junior Chambers, the Guide, Guides and Scouts of Finland, and etc. So, so we have many big NGOs with us. And these examples I will tell you about today. Uh, we have done them with these uh, these five, these four NGOs here. So, so that's our that's our main thing. Mm, and we have been involved with batches for about 10 years now. Uh, our first touch was at 2011. And that was the first time we heard about the batches. And we have been issuing batches since 2013. So a long history with batches. And we are not so much issuing batches anymore. I think that our role has changed. Um, we are more a facilitator among the NGO field. So we make this batching possible. We facilitate uh, the batch work, the batch creation in NGOs, and we also uh, create batch families that NGOs can use. So yeah, we are a facilitator in the batch field, I think so. And mostly our batches are about volunteer work or working life skills. Those are the two topics which are really important to us. And we are involved uh, in three levels of batch creation, uh, maybe four if we, uh, if we talk about also the, our international batching we have some interna international batches also. But our uh, levels in batching are quite wide. So there is the nationwide level to the individual level and the organizational level is in between. So we have badges in all three of these levels. In Finland, we are really interested in creating nation nationwide badges like digital skills or, or skills that um, and batches that can be used everywhere in Finland. And we like to use a nationwide frameworks when we create such batch families. And of course, there are the organization level, one organization who is used batches. But today I'm here to talk, you, talk to you about our individual level batches. So it's the, yeah, it's the end of the, the wide, wide, <laughs> tunnel of our batch creation. So from the national nationwide level to the individual level, and now we are focusing on the individual level. And I think that's, uh, that's the best part of batches. You can use them in many levels. And the individual level, the selfie batches, uh, they have brought so much new perspectives to our batch system. And I'm really excited to tell you about a little more about our examples. But long history with batches, a uh, lot of ups and downs, some mistakes, uh, a lot of successes. Yeah, the usual story with batches. And I thought I, I tell you about why we use the selfie batches and why we use the batches, etc. 
the civic study center our goal is to enhance the validation of learning prior learning mostly informal and non-formal and we want to mm, validate learning in formal education and also in working life and we have done uh, many experiments with the formal education system and we have matched our badges with the skills and competencies that are needed in the formal education system but nowadays, nowadays we are more interested in working life skills how how skills and competencies that you get when you participate to NGOs activities, how they can help you in working life, how they can help you uh, with getting a job or how they can help you in get promoted or things like that. So I think that our main interest in batches has been working life profile and today is a great example of the batches that we use for, for the working life. Yes, so two goals and nowadays we tend to look more to the working life and uh, talk with uh, employers on how they see batches and what our batches should be like and how we can match the skills and etc. Yeah, so we call them the qualification validation and career advancement validation are terms of saying that what are the goals of our badging. Yeah, so I call this a selfie badges idea in our field. I call it the turning tables around or something like that, because our traditional way has been that an organization is the one who creates the badge, uh, does the skill definition, skill identification, the whole process is owned by the organization. And the individual's role is to compare and match their skills to these uh, uh, skills and competencies that has been described in a badge. So it's it, it has been in many ways, it has been, uh, mm, the organization is the owner of the batch and the batching and it has worked out well. We have, we haven't had any problems with that and we still do that through that, of course. Uh, but I think that the main challenge has been that an individual, the, the one who gets the batch hasn't always uh, felt comfortable with the batch and the badge hasn't been, uh, I think it hasn't been always valued as much as we thought as an organization that our badges would be valued. And I think that the one a major challenge has been that uh, we like to think that a badge is only a beginning and by adding uh, evidence and by adding endorsement, the badge gains its whole value. And when uh, the organization has been the batch maker and the skill definer and the whole idea in the process. I think that uh, some of the mm, batch recipients has thought that, okay, this is a nice badge, but, it, but it's not really that valuable to me. Not always, but sometimes. And for a long time, we thought that this is the only way to create badges, that it's always an organization who defines, defines the skills. And it's always the individual who compares. So the comparison, I think, has been the main problem for me, <laughs> because I think that when you identify and you recognize and you validate skills, it's always based on a comparison to something. And I think that there should be more. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't always be about a comparison to something. And that's why we call the selfie badges a new opportunity. So a new opportunity for the unique skills that I want to make visible. I'm in charge of the definition of the skills. I'm in charge of the identification 
So I take charge in the process when I make a selfie badge. So I think that has been the turning tables around idea with us. And of course, we want to use both of these ways together because they support is each other. But I'm really glad that we have this new opportunity because I think it keeps the unique skills more space to come out. And when we have created these selfie badges, we have also discovered that when people take the ownership to these badges, uh, they are more likely to add evidence, they are more likely to ask for endorsements. So I think that the badge process is a bit different when we have used selfie badges. People, there are, there are my badges, <laughs> there are things that I have described and I stand, stand behind those skills and competencies. And I want to make the bats dynamic. I want to add evidence and I, I want to ask for endorsements. So that's, uh, yeah, that's our experience. And that's why we have gone through this. And mostly we have used the selfie badges with uh, young people and young people have been um, really happy that they have this opportunity and I will give you some examples on what we have done. Yeah, uh, but what is a selfie badge? I don't know, have you already uh, created your own selfie badges? And so you can use the open badge passport for this creation and you can, you can issue the badge to yourself or you can issue the badge to somebody else, but you take charge in the badge creation and you define the skills and what you want to describe with this badge. But yes, we use the Open Badge Passport for that, uh, mainly because it's in Finnish and it's easier that way. And also it's free. So these are the main two reasons. And our experience has also been that it's technically quite easy. So it doesn't require uh, a lot of technical support. It's easy, easy to do. Uh, but we also uh, use Canva. I don't know, is uh, Canva uh, familiar to you? So it's a free application uh, which you can create different kind of pictures. <laughs> and we use the Canva to create a picture for the badge. And in with Canva, we get really, uh, really good quality pictures. And I will give you some examples soon. There, the pictures uh, are all made in Canva and Canva is also a free, free application. So we use this combination. So open batch passport for the criteria and the process and Canva for the picture itself. And I also think that it's really nice that you can uh, also create your own picture because uh, we also have created selfie badges in a way that uh, people are creating a badge for the same skill, but they all use their own unique pictures to display the badge. So it's also a nice way to give the uniqueness to the badge. Yeah. And uh, of course, after the batch creation and after the batch issuing, we actively guide people to add evidence and seek for endorsement. So I think that the evidence adding and endorsement seeking is a vital part of the selfie badges. Of course, the selfie badge, when it describes your skills, it's uh, valuable as such, but we think that it adds value when we guide people to use it kind of like a portfolio so that they can add their own evidence and seek for endorsements. And it has been really, really fun to watch how people seek for endorsement. They have seek the endorsement from the peers and teachers and, and employers and um, many people. And I also think that uh, this uh, selfie badge creation has something to do with your, we, in Finland we call it the skill identity, competence identity. We don't really have a, I don't have an English word, but it's about uh, building your identity 
based on your skills and competencies, which you may have acquired in different ways. And a selfie badge is a great example on how you can display your skill and competence identity in your own way. And building this skill and competence identity, it, um, it can happen uh, by yourself, but we recommend that you do this in groups in groups that are that consist of peers so you can uh, talk talk together and add skills and uh, work together in a group to create a selfie badge and to create identity of your skills and competencies so i think that this group peer work works well with selfie badges but some examples, I'm, I'm sorry, some of the phrases are in Finnish. I couldn't get them all in English. Uh, these are my examples, uh, but uh, all of these we have used in our groups. So this is the first example of the selfie batch work we have done. So we have gathered young people together to create batches and we have uh, facilitate, facilitate them through the process. And uh, firstly, we have asked the young people uh, about their interests. What do you like to do in your free time? Uh, do you have some unique skills that you want to tell other people about? Uh, what do you like to do? What are you good at? So we have asked these kind of questions and uh, there's always three kind of skills and competencies that come up when we ask the young, pe young people about, their, about what they like to do in their free time, what are they interested about. And one is online gaming that always comes up. Uh, the other one is about video editing for Instagram or for TikTok or other social media. And the third one is this, uh, I, we call it the master chefing. So trying new recipes, creating new recipes, cooking, baking, and things like that. So these three really often come up. The fourth one is my, my own. <laughs> it's about uh, recognizing skills, but it's in Finnish because I, I use it in other, other fields. Yeah, but these are the three selfie batch groups that we have discovered that uh, are nowadays the most uh, asked for skills and competencies among young people. And we have created a group with peers, um, with online gaming, with video editing and with master chefing. And this group together, they have started to identify the skills that are uh, gained when you are an online gamer and they have defined the skills, identified the skills, they have defined the skills together and then they have discussed uh, that how can I prove that I have these skills and competencies and they have produced, produced videos and screenshots and they have asked for endorsement with the same uh, group that plays the same game, the members of the theme internationally. So it has been a really uh, eye-opening process on how much people have skills and competencies, for example, online gaming. And the reason we chose the selfie badge is because there isn't a badge about online gaming. There just isn't. No organization in Finland issues a badge about online gaming. And these people who want the online gaming badge, uh, they, are, they are not always a member of any organization. They, they just like to do it on their free time. So there really isn't, in many cases, an organization who could validate this kind of learning. So it's a thing they like to do in their free time. And uh, with the skill identification and with the skill definition, uh, they came up with team leadership, strategists, organization, organizer and supporter. 
and I, I think it's really great. And yeah, so that is the badge and the badge is about presenting my skills related to online gaming. Yeah, and the picture they made with Canva and this is just one example, we have many more. And this is just one rep representation of the online gaming skills. And with the evidence and with the endorsement, uh, their goal is to add this selfie badge to their CV and to share it in LinkedIn and use it when they are seeking for a job, a summer job or maybe a permanent job. And the same thing with the video editing, they didn't want to create a badge about Instagram or TikTok. Uh, they wanted to emphasize the video editing skills and they had a lot of evidence. So I think that these badges were more portfolios. So they were a collection of samples of the videos they have edited and skills related to that. And the third one was about master chefing, and this batch contains their own recipes and their videos and their photos of the recipes they have tried and things like that. And all of these batches, they want to use them when they apply for a job. So they are working life related batches. But in many cases, I think that they could also use the badge if they are studying in a formal education institute and they want to check out that is there any way that if, I, if I'm studying to be a chef, so could I use this master chef badge? Uh, the question I mm, quite commonly get is that how are these badges reliable? because you have made them yourselves. But I think in Finland, that's the way things work. Uh, we are a competence-based country, so we really don't care nowadays uh, the way, uh, how have you gained these skills and competencies? I don't know, is there a word for a skill, um, skill and competence-based idea? Maybe it's... Uh, uh, competence-based learning. I think that's the uh, most likely the right term. Uh, but if you have evidence that you have the skills and competencies, you can show them and you can get validation and recognition for those skills. And I think that the endorsement feature also adds the value to these batches because you can get endorsement from your uh, team members in online gaming batch or you can get uh, endorsements from your peers and things like that. So this is one example, what have we done? And we are, we are currently doing this a lot more. So we are hosting these work groups with young people where we facilitate the technical process and we also help them with the skill identification and skill description if they want to. But the group, the peer group, uh, I think it's quite autonomous. It, it works and helps and supports all the, all the group members. And yeah, I hope that we see a lot more of selfie badges in the open batch, open batch passport. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I think there will be a lot more about these, these three categories soon. So this is one example and then we have uh, another example. What have we done? Uh, so this is quite uh, this is quite free. It doesn't have any any specific structure. We just go with the flow whatever the young people in that group are interest, interested about and we help them. But uh, my other example it's a bit more structured and also the a goal is the working life. And I'm sorry, this is Google Translate. Uh, it tried its best, but in mm, not in all, all, always the best 
possible outcome, but I will try to tell you a little bit, little bit more because the material is in Finnish. But uh, my example is a web course named Show Your Skills in Finnish Näytä Osaamisesi. And it's about skills uh, rele relevant to working life that you get when you participate in NGOs activities, mostly to volunteer work. And it has uh, five themes, and these themes are all uh, skills and competencies that you can get from the NGOs, but there are also skills and competencies that are important in the working life now and in the future. And we select five uh, collaboration skills, uh, planning of activities, maybe organizing is a better term, uh, guidance and training, group leadership and entrepreneurial skills. So these are the five skill families that we identified. And we had five NGOs which took charge of each of those. So we had the junior chambers and they are really skilled in collaboration skills. So they, uh, they took charge of that competence. And then we have the uh, Child Welfare Association and they have many, many activities and organizing uh, skills and things like that. So they took charge of the uh, organizing, planning of activities, that sort of competence. Uh, the Finnish Red Cross was in charge of the guidance and training because they have many, many groups and they, they do a lot of training with their volunteers. The volunteers are actively training other volunteers. The guides and scouts took in charge of the group leadership. They have uh, Leadership is one of the things that guides and scouts are really proud and and that is a skill that can be gained through their activities. And the 4-H, they stand with entrepreneurial skills. There is a 4-H entrepreneur is one of the things that they have in Finland, maybe, maybe internationally also. So they took charge of the competence and uh, we had about 60 volunteers. This was a pilot. I, I'm hoping that it would be a permanent model in NGOs, but this was a pilot and we had 60 people piloting this web course and this batch making. And a little bit more about our pilots and how the selfie batches were a part of this. The oh, the wrong one. Okay, so my example is about cooperation skills. So I took this as an example and the uh, Finnish junior chambers was in charge of this. And it says that you have just entered an interesting world of the cooperation skills and through the next three steps you can show your skills. So each of these competencies uh, had three steps. Uh, and through the re through these steps, you showed your skills with selfie badges. And the first uh, first step was the webinar. So we had uh, junior chambers uh, hosted a webinar about cooperation skills, collaboration skills, and that was um, kind of a starting point. That if you have not previously thought about your cooperation skills, the webinar was the place to start. So it gave a glimpse of what are the cooperation skills and how you can gain them and how you can train them. And uh, if you don't already have the experience, what in what ways you can get more experience. So kind of this, it ignites the interest to, co to cooperation skills. And we also have the recording of the webinar and then the material. So if you couldn't uh, attend to the live, live webinar, you could watch the recording of the webinar. But uh, we preferred that people uh, 
participate in the live webinar because the webinar was about the peer group and it was about uh, uh, conversations and things like that. So it was better if they could attend live. Yeah, but this was the first step on recognizing and showing your skills with selfie badges. So the first step, the starting point was the webinar. And then we ja challenged the participants. Uh, each of these uh, skills and competencies had two challenges. Here is one described, and I'm sorry about the Google Translate if there's something really weird, but this is the straight translation. And why we wanted to use the challenges, I, I think that the most recent example came from the Elon Musk, the Tesla millionaire, who said that I only ask one question when people are applying for a job in Tesla. And the question is that tell me about a challenge you have um, countered and how have you solved that challenge. And we had challenges and we wanted people to solve these challenges. And all the challenges were real situations that you most likely find yourself in when you are applying for a job. For example, the challenge one was that you will be asked in a job interview to tell us what kind of collaboration skills you have need, needed. And then we had a little, little helping text that how to get started. And I think that these challenges were about uh, deepening your ideas about your skills in collaboration. If the webinar was the first glimpse and the starting point, these challenges were about deepening your own ideas about the skills and skills and competencies you have with collaboration skills, but also ways to gain evidence about your own collaboration skills. And these evidences could be used with selfie badges, which is the third step. But yes, the challenges, yeah, you did them by yourself or with the peer group, with the others, and then you get some evidence to your badge at the same time when your thoughts are deepening with the subject. And the third step was about creating a selfie badge on collaboration skills. Uh, we didn't want to give them a collaboration skill badge that was issued by CBIS or was issued by Red Cross or issued by Scouts and Guides. We didn't want to do that. Uh, we wanted that people create their own batches. So we didn't want to take charge of the uh, batch and skill description and identifying. We didn't want to be that, that organization. We were the facilitating ones and the participants were the owners of the batching, the batch creation. Uh, but we gave them a lot of help and a lot of facilitating so they could be able to do that. Uh, I created some batch templates that they could use if they have not already uh, created any batches. It was a new thing, so I gave them a lot of different templates from which to choose, choose and which to start. And then also this section was about, was about how to describe your skills in a way that other people also can, uh, can read your skills. And then we have the uh, technical uh, guides, the uh, selfie batch making, and all this put together, we had uh, 60 unique batches about mm, collaboration skills. And all these 60 batches will, will be filled with evidence and filled with endorsement. And yeah, that's basically it. So we didn't want to create a one batch that we would issue to 60 people, the same batch. But instead, we have 60 selfie batches that are endorsed by us are, and are with evidence about those skills and competencies. 
uh, this was a pilot and people are just doing these selfie badges, so you cannot find them in Open Pass Passport. But hopefully soon these badges will be there. So I think that these two examples combined, there should be, I don't know, about 100 selfie badges about working life skills in Open Batch Passport. And I'm really excited about this because uh, I have seen a couple of batches that people are making, for example, this uh, from these uh, cooperation skills. And they're great. They are so different. People have chosen a really different perspective on how to describe skills and it's the same skill, but you have described it in your own unique way and you have your unique evidence and your unique endorsements. And I'm really happy we, we get to experience this because I think these batches are much better than the batch that we would have created for collaboration skills. So I think it was a success. But yes, so we are just experimenting these two were my examples on what have we done. The first one was the free way of thinking that you can create a badge about anything, any unique skill you have. And this example was more structured. So we had these themes for the badges and the process for more heavily facilitated, but both the result was a selfie badge. Yeah. So this was my, my examples and my presentation for you about our selfie batching. And I'm here for questions if you want to ask something about selfie batch making or anything else. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lotta. <clears throat> so any questions? Uh, can you even... Uh, in the chat or, I mean, we can also use uh, microphones also for the questions. So what I, I could say uh, now when people are thinking about uh, the questions. I have a question. Oh, sorry. sorry. Sorry, I have a question. Please. Uh, so I like the way that it's very participatory and that it's like action research or think in reflecting on their own uh, in creating their own badges. So you have 60 different types of, of badges for, for a cooperation, but how is it now possible to compare it or to how, how can the, the organization deal with that different types of, how can you categorize them or how can you work with them? I mean, it's a nice to have for for the for the people that they are creating their own badges, but uh, how can you compare it? Mm, I think that the main thing is that we wanted to skip the comparison. <laughs> mm. I think that that was the idea with our selfie badges. So uh, we discovered that some people the comparison the comparison to each, each other or the comparison to some. Uh, like um, some framework or comparison to anything uh, could be a scary thing and, and, and a thing that people say that, okay, I don't want to do this. I don't have the skills and competencies and we wanted to skip the comparison <laughs> and let the skills and competencies come as there are without any comparison. So you are right, they are, they are not, you, you cannot compare them to each other. But I think that uh, every one of those 60 badges will be used in job searching and in job, ap job application. So I think that, the, mm -hmm. mm, yeah, I think that they are not meant to be compared to anything. The, other, the only people who compares probably something is the employer when they see the badge and they compare that is this a good portfolio of the skills that we need. But yes, I think, yeah, we wanted to skip the comparison, yes. <laughs> yeah, but this this point of uh, basically matching and 
and grouping and, and comparing, it's, it's of course, um, in a way, I would say organization-centric approach. We are interested on getting things, you know, uh, with the same uh, currency that we can compare. But, but basically, I would say that the, the uh, selfie badge or self claim badge is more about the portfolio. So it's a basically an individual expression and reflection on my skills. And let's say it's very, it could be very effective. You know, of course, for you can think that employers don't want these kind of badges because they can't compare and in one way measure your, your skills or competencies. But I think that in many cases, um, for employers, it's better to see the whole picture, the whole picture of your of your individual you know, skills and experience, than to get something which is shrink in some kind of uh, predefined standard competence, which is not perhaps saying anything about your real potential. So, mm -hmm. sorry, a lot. I just wanted to, mm -hmm. to add some Thank idea you. here. So, I would say the selfie badge, in my opinion, it's a it's a uh, the, uh, the, the portfolio reborn as a badge. So it's, it's a portfolio as a uh, micro portfolio, a badge as a micro portfolio, mm -hmm. uh, very uh, subject driven. So Don, you uh, had a question about, uh, it's very much re related uh, to this question. Uh, what about individual mapping uh, them the badges to national skills frameworks or endorsement uh, include mapping uh, to those frameworks. What do you think about that? Mm, I, I think in Finland we are quite um, lost with the national skills framework. We have some, but um, mm, yeah, I, I think we have some frameworks with working life and then we have other frameworks with a uh, formal education system yeah. and we don't have a common framework for everyone. <laughs> uh, if we are talking about uh, digital skills, for example, mm -hmm. there is a framework and it's really clear, but I think that other skills and competencies are lacking. Uh, we have uh, tried ESCO with the badges, but it's, it's a good framework when you are uh, approaching the working life, but it's not a good framework when you want to uh, see the paths in formal education system. It's not a framework they use. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we have frameworks, but these selfie badges are without framework. But of course, we mm, encourage both the selfie badge makers and the organizations the use the keywords and tags in open batch factory um, because um, yeah in, in in Finland we are really in, interested about how to transfer badges from another system to another so how to transfer a badge from the open batch passport to another system and I'm not talking about social media mm -hmm. I'm talking about um, uh, systems uh, from the employee em employment sector and things like that. So national big systems. And when we use the keywords and tags, it helps the artificial intelligence that is present in every, every digital system. It helps the uh, artificial intelligence to sniff out the skills and competencies from these keywords and from these tags. And in that way, you can form your own framework and do your own matching with the skills and competencies. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think our framework is mostly built on keywords and tags. Yeah. As, as a developer of the OpenMash Passport, you know, we are thinking about the next step. Uh, and we have been thinking about uh, the possibility to to create your selfie badge and then to point to ESCO, uh, for example, which is, in my opinion, would be better than to pre-design pre a badge based on competency frameworks and then try to get someone matching with it. So you could basically express your, yourself, create your micro portfolio badge, basically, and then say, okay, 
this is my experience, this is my skills, uh, this is my, my story, but I can say that uh, I find that I can do these things or I've been doing these things which are from ESCO, uh, from ESCO. This could help then to have your badge in one way, uh, uh, let's say read by the machine, reading things with uh, uh, and compare with uh, competency framework used by employability sectors and all all kind of things. So it's uh, interesting that you can get your badge endorsed by peers, but you could basically add your competencies later on your badge. It's something we are exploring. Yeah, and I'm really in interested about um, building a model, <laughs> kind of a peer group model based on this, that uh, I think that the selfie badge creation is more fruitful when you do it together mm -hmm. with other people who share the same interest and the same, same skills and competencies. So, yeah, I would like to... Mm, offer our NGOs a model of a peer group who are creating selfie batches with our model. So that would be basically an idea that I'm really interested about. And then probably I would like to get uh, some people from the NGOs to do the facilitating with this group in one NGO. So mm -hmm. yeah, the peer, the, the group is a really important thing, I think, in selfie batching. And it's, uh, yeah, it, I, I, I'm not sure, is there a really good term for this skill, competence, identity? Eric and Minna, I mean, Osamis identiteetti, mm -hmm. skill, competence, identity. It's a really hip thing in Finland nowadays. And your identity is built with peers, with other people. Mm -hmm. And I think it's an idea which goes great together with selfie batches because with selfie batches, you can you can present your own unique skill mm -hmm. identity and help to create it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's interesting, uh, important to to remember that when um, um, Mozilla created the batch, the, the open batch concept, uh, there was a lot of um, uh, let's say text of Mozilla at the first person, I want to celebrate my skills. I want to be recognized. It, 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 was, not, I, it was not, I want to be uh, recognized by some organization. I want to be recognized also by, by my peer. So it was at, mostly at the first person. So we have uh, other questions. Uh, could the uh, employer or training assessment facilitator endorse the selfie badges? What do you think, Lotta? Uh, yeah, yeah. In NGOs, mm, in Finnish NGOs, there uh, there is always a, a coordinator of the volunteer work, the volunteer work coordinator. I'm not sure is that the right term, but there is a person who is in charge of the volunteer work that happens in an NGO, and. Uh, I have been uh, long interested in adding to this job description something about skill recognizing with the volunteer workers. And I think uh, this could be the right person to act as an endorser. So it's a person who knows the volunteers and can come behind their skills and competencies and also can help with the selfie badge creation. So that would be a great person for the uh, endorser. But yeah, uh, we encourage people to map their, uh, uh, map possible endorsers <laughs> from everywhere. And of course, if you have uh, previously been working somewhere, your employers could be a great, great people to mm. endorse. And also, if you are, uh, yeah, if you are seeking for a job, you could ask a facilitator from that field to be an endorser. Yeah, but um, some people say that I don't have an endorser. There is no one who can endorse my skills and competencies, and I think that's the that's the hardest thing to get people to understand that you can 
you, you can look further. It doesn't have to be your past employer or your teacher. It can be somebody else. And of course, you can actively seek for, you, you, can, you can display your evidence and ask for feedback and ask for endorsements. You can be an active part in that uh, endorsement seeking. So it doesn't just have to be that you know some person you can send your badge to. You can actively make your evidence visible and in that way get feedback and acquire some endorsers. But yeah, I, yeah that's, uh, that has been the trickiest part when some young people say to me that I don't have anyone who could come behind my skills. I think the, 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 the process is very interesting because uh, we are speaking here about uh, um, a different enough approach than in, in many cases people get badges just by going to a Moodle course or whatever you want and they just get the badge. So, uh, they are they are quite passive. Uh, now, if we uh, when we speak about uh, selfie badges or self claim badges, basically, first of all, you, you have to be proactive because you you will create your own badge. It's, so, I think it's very good for educators. It's a very good tool. The, the the most difficult thing is you have to reflect to try to understand what you can really do, which is not easy. You have to write it which is not easy, neither. Um, and then you have to showcase it in a way, but if you want to get an endorsement, you just can't say something, you have to produce some evidence that you have to, to showcase and add in your badge. And then you have to get this uh, endorsement, this recognition. So you have to be active to, to get someone uh, endorsing you. So uh, personally, I like the idea of uh, uh, Basically, um, um, it's a tool for uh, you know engaging people really on, on the development of life lifelong learning. You know, you, you are really the the engine of your development, and not only uh, some uh, let's say uh, passive recipient mm -hmm. of uh, badges. Of course, you can have both. Yes, you can have both. And I think that you said the key word is that you are not a passive <laughs> in you. Sometimes you can be a passive recipient in a batch that is created by an organization and you don't that that's not my, my badge. I just I'm just one of the recipients. But I think that the main thing about selfie badges is that you take the ownership. Yeah. It's your badges. They are not compared to anyone other. They are your badges, and you are the active, active. You you are the active maker in that badge. Yeah. Yeah. yeah very good. So and we had uh, other question uh, because the badge was explicitly about cooperation, uh, some way of labeling the resulting badge, so it can be found. So, uh, sorry, I read it perhaps not in a good way, but can you understand? Yeah, yeah, and I think it was about the keywords and tags. Yeah, so, keywords and tags. Yeah, 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 these are really important. And I, I, I always like to think about that when you are creating a badge, you should think about, uh, you should think about the person who opens the badge and reads the badge. But nowadays, nowadays, it's not always a person. It can be a machine. It can be artificial and intelligence which reads the badge. So I think that these keywords and tags help the artificial intelligence to understand what is this badge about. And I think that the skill description helps the individual, a uh, real person to understand about mm -hmm. the skills and competencies. And now, nowadays, you have to think about the both of them <laughs> when you create a badge, I, I think, yeah. Yeah. So I think that a lot that we, you already told about the, the question of do organizations value selfie badges or not. Uh, can you tell me again about what kind of uh, feedback did you get by organizations about uh, selfie badge? Selfie badge is a bit a provocative word uh when we developed this self self claim badge feature in open badge passport uh, i saw that selfie badge 
would be uh, a bit uh, disruptive uh, and also something that people can't remember easily. But uh, sometimes I, I know that uh, the hairs are dressed on, on the head and there is a strong reaction. What, what is your experience about it? Um, yeah. Mm, we are just piloting, so we don't have a lot of experience on the batches that what have happened to them after they have been uh, created and issued. Uh, but we have some uh, working life contacts and we have talked to them about this idea and they have said that, oh, we don't mind wh who have issued the badge. It's not interested to us. We are not interested in that. We are not interested about the organization who is behind the badge. We like to read about the skills <laughs> and competencies. So, so they are really interested in seeing the evidence and reading the endorsements. So I think that that has been the feedback is that, oh, we don't even look who is the issuer. It's not, a, we don't care. Yeah, so I think that has been um, really supportive. <laughs> yeah, I'm the formal education system. I'm not sure what do they think about. Sometimes I think that they are more strict and they are really, uh, it's a big thing that who is the organization who has evaluated the skills and competencies. So I think that the skill evaluation and comparison is a much bigger thing in the formal education system. But I think the Finnish working life is more ready <laughs> for the selfie badges because, uh, yeah, yeah. But I admit, that maybe the formal, formal education system is not that ready, but I think that the working life that we have, yeah, the ideas that we have gotten from there has been really supportive. Yeah. I think about this, uh, I, I've made this question, I mean, this is uh, challenge sometimes. And I think that there is a misunderstanding uh, between two things about certifications, certification and about recognition. So uh, I, I understand that for a formal organization, it makes sense that, you know, uh, official body should be the, the organization that basically uh, certify. I understand that. Certifying is not the all, the all recognition. Recognition is much more than certification. So I think that uh, uh, and I think that a selfie badge is not about self-recognition. In my opinion, it's just only uh, reflection and, you know, I would say shaping, showcasing things. And I think that the recognition is coming from the recognition by peers. So anyway, uh, but I think that there is a kind of, uh, we, are, we are often uh, reducing recognition to certification and, and it's not the same thing uh, you can recognize something without to cert certify it or without giving a, a diploma or a diploma or whatever you want okay any other questions ah Thank you very much, Dawn. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to hear. <laughs> I, think we, I think that we will get the selfie badges uh, slowly but surely, you know, raising and changing the world. <laughs> uh, I can say just some statistics. Uh, at the moment, we have 943 um, selfie badges in Open Bash Passport. And last month, in one month, 149 new selfie badges. So the number of selfie badges is clearly increasing in Open Badge Passport. I could have a, not a final question, but some, some question for all participants. We, we are thinking of perhaps changing a bit the, the logic of Open Badge Passport and to basically make publishing of selfie badges possible only if the badges has been endorsed. 
what do you think about that? So the question is, can I publish uh, to everybody a badge that I've been creating myself, but which is not endorsed? Or do we need to have endorsement, at least one endorsement before to be able to publish it? Any ideas, Mother? What do you think, uh, Lotta? Mm, I think we have uh, talked about this together. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think it could be a way to um, in selfie batches, it could be a way to um, promote the idea that the endorsement is really important in a selfie batch. But on the other hand, we have selfie batch makers who say that I cannot find fly. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know. It's a good thing, but on the other hand, it's difficult. Okay. Well, I think everyone can think about this dilemma. And, but, uh, thank you very much, Lotta, for your great presentation. As someone said that it's uh, one of the best top three of, uh, of the F Academy sessions. So, cool. Bravo. Thank great. you. It was nice to talk about selfie badges, my new favorite thing. <laughs> And thank you for, for, for me, also it was, uh, I think, the first presentation about um, selfie badges in uh, really, in a context, you know, working with people with uh, selfie badges. Uh, I had already ideas about what is, would be possible to do with selfie badges. Now you, you just told us what you have been doing with uh, selfie badges and it's very encouraging and really uh, interesting experience. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.